I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Tonight I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Now shout it out, never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I told Dodie coming down here to church tonight, I said, I'm so happy when I can preach every day. So I get to preach every day between now and Thursday and uh, twice a day, of course, on most of those days. But as I, as I preach, I get stronger. Hallelujah. I tell you, I believe I'm called to preach. Amen. Amen. I just, I just tell you, I enjoy especially preaching and encouraging ministers. Now, uh, I'm going to read this to you out of, uh, out of the King James Version here. Psalm 92, 10. But you, my horn you have exalted, exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be, and the living Bible, uh, the Amplified said, I am anointed with fresh oil. Now I'm going to talk about the fresh anointing of God. You know, we all ought to be glad for the fact that we are born of the Holy Spirit. And thank God that our, the Holy Ghost witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. Even before we received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, I knew I was a Christian. I knew the Holy Ghost told me inside that I belonged to Jesus. But thank God there's more. There is the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. And, and you know, there's a certain amount of anointing on every Christian, but there's a real strong anointing when you get the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Could I have a better amen? amen. And you know, it's wonderful, you know, that uh, the Holy Ghost, you know, uh, uh, anoints us to do our work. You don't have to be a preacher to have an anointing. Every Christian has an anointing. God calls you to do certain things, and you can do it with joy and with power because He anoints you to do that. But I, my, the thrust of this message tonight is this. Let's pray for a fresh anointing. David said, He has anointed me with fresh oil. You know, I've been preaching 55 years. You didn't even think I was that old, did you? What's wrong with your eyes? But I tell you, for 19 years I preached without the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and I struggled, and I, I thought I was doing pretty good, and now I wonder how I even live the Christian life without the baptism. I'm telling you, it's such a difference. But all these years I've had the baptism since 1958, it just seems like yesterday that I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost and started speaking in other tongues. When I first got baptized, I just got one word, O Tolio. Somebody said, that's not much. When you haven't had anything for 19 years, O Tolio's a lot. <laughs> Amen. But when I started with O Tolio, I went on to other things. I found out O Tolio is Greek for the end. That was the end of my search. Hallelujah. And, uh, but you know, it's wonderful to preach all over the world. And I've gone from the Amazon basin to the Himalayan mountains. That desire to preach to a lost world has always been with me, and I delight to be pastor of this church. I, I'm so glad God wouldn't let anybody else be pastor but me. I'm so glad He let me be pastor of this church. You may not be glad, but I'm glad. <laughs> and you know, through the years, you know, you get tired and you get weary, and sometimes the devil says, well, why don't you leave and all of that. The devil's crazy. He's out of his mind. And, but, but we do, uh, you know, we do uh, get not tired of the work, but we get tired sometime in the work. 
You know, sometimes I get the idea and y'all fussing me for saying this. I tell Dodi, I said, if those people have to hear me preach one more time, they're going to kill me. I said, I preached to them for so many years. They're tired of hearing me preach. And then you shout, oh, no. Don't you still shout that? Yeah. Amen. But, but, you know, the devil works, you know. And so, so every once in a while, we need to get out and we need to get, I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, just give me a fresh anointing. Just a fresh anointing. You know, when I go on these trips overseas, you notice when I come back, I, I, there just something happens. I get away and, and just, uh, just ask for, you know, God to give me a fresh anointing, fresh anointing. And uh, sometimes I get, I used to out where Ruthie lives now, I used to get out in that front tree and that big old back tree back there in the back. And I'd sit under that tree about four or five o'clock in the morning when I'd feel like I needed fresh anointing and I'd get me a cup of coffee and I'd cover up with a blanket, you know, and Sometimes I'd get in the front yard and I'd look like an Indian sitting out there, you know, in a teepee and, and I was sipping this coffee and I was praying and I'd talk to God about, you know, all the way he led me and all the mercy he's had on me and all the goodness and how wonderful it is to serve him. Oh, it's so wonderful. So wonderful. You ought to just rehearse your life every once in a while with the Lord. Thank him for how he's lifted you when you've fallen, been merciful to you and all of that, you know, and and, uh, and I'd ask the Lord, Lord, give me, give me fresh oil. Give me a fresh anointing. That's what we ought to do. We ought, we ought to have fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Oh, glory to God. Thank God for the mighty anointing. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And uh, it's not hard to pastor this church. I'm telling you the God's truth. It is not hard. There's a rest. I have someone who anoints me to do this work. Hallelujah. And I tell you, if it's wearing me out, then it's me doing it, not the Holy Ghost. Amen. I tell you, I have a good time. I don't ever worry about what to preach. And I know some of you say, dear God, I know now why it's so bad. But, but no, I, I confess it's always good. Amen. I just, I just feed you on what God feeds me. Amen. But, but everybody shout, anoint me, O Lord Jesus. Anoint me, O God, with fresh oil. Fresh oil. I want everybody who's coming for this minister's meeting to stand up. And I want you to hold up your hand. And I want you to cry out the congregation. You can say it with them, but I want them standing. Oh God. Oh, blessed Jesus, anoint me, anoint me with fresh oil, fresh oil, new dimensions, higher realms than I've ever had, greater vision, fresh oil. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap, would you? Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus never did do anything until he got the Holy Ghost. Got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came down on him. And, and we won't do much unless we have that, uh, that, that anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we won't do much unless we stay renewed. You know, you can dry up and blow away. I mean, you can just get so dry, you're brittle. And just because you talk in tongues a little bit doesn't mean you have the divine anointing of God. I'm telling you, you need that fire. You need that, that unction. You need that divine energy. And I'll tell you, when you have that, you've got it all. You've got it all. Now, I want to give you, I want to give you the source of the anointing, the purpose of the anointing, the power of the anointing, and the help of the anointing. It's a little outline. The source of the anointing, it says in, um, in 2 Corinthians, you just write this down, don't turn to it, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse, um, verse 21, listen, uh, verse 20, verse 21, but now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. It is the source of the anointing of God is from God himself. It is God who gave you that anointing. 
And, uh, and God anointed you because he wanted you anointed. Did you know we live in such a privileged hour? In the old covenant, only the priest and the prophet and, and uh, the king and maybe a few others could be anointed of the Holy Ghost. Only a few. But thank God, Jesus, when he died, the veil of the temple was rent in twain and God moved out of buildings and moved into people. Hallelujah. And God now wants all of his children anointed. You know, we use that scripture over there sometimes when somebody jumps on a preacher and, and, you know, we say that scripture says, touch not mine anointed, do my prophets no harm. Now, that, that was all right in the Old Testament, but you're not back there in the Old Testament. That's like they were the only ones that had the anointing. You, you better be careful because they were God's spokesman to that generation. But today, all of God's people are born again and they can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. So it's not just a preacher. You ought not to touch God's anointed anywhere. Whether it's somebody sitting in the pew or up here preaching. Thank God the anointing is precious. But it is God. The anointing I received when I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And that wonderful language came out of me. Came as the promise of the Father. Thank God I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. I have that anointing. Whether you feel it or not, I tell you, I've, I've got it whether I feel it or not. That song says, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. But let me tell you something, whether you got the feeling or not, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Everything is. So the source of our anointing is God. Now the purpose of the anointing is found in two scriptures. You don't need to turn. Acts 10, 10, 38, and, and Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Listen, how God anointed, listen to me, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. God anointed him. See, the anointing is from God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Notice now the purpose. He went about. He didn't sit home all the time. He went about doing good. The anointing of God will help you to do good. What was the good he did? Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The purpose of the anointing of the Holy Ghost on Jesus was that he might have power to deliver those who were oppressed of the devil. Amen. Let me tell you something, folks. There are many millions of people op oppressed of the devil, and there's only one name they'll bow to, and that's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the purpose of his anointing was that he might go about and do good and and and. Uh, and, and bring healing to all that were oppressed of the devil. You notice every person Jesus healed was oppressed of the devil and was not made sick by God. God doesn't make people sick. No, no, no. They're oppressed of the devil. And if you have sickness in your body and you have aches and pains in your body and you have disease in your body, it's the devil that oppresses you. I want everybody right now. You got some disease you're fighting in your body and I fight some in my body. I, I tell you, I want you to jump to your feet and say, you oppressing devil, get out of my body. Come on, say it. Jump up, jump up and shout it. Shout it again, come on. You oppressing devil, get out of my body. Get out of my body. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now say, ha ha, devil. Ha, ha, devil. Say, I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Put your Bibles down and give the Lord a hand clap, would you? <laughs> Amen. Now, the purpose is that he might bring healing to those who are oppressed of the devil. I'm telling you, the name of Jesus you bear will break the power of the devil. And then Luke 4, 18 is my favorite scripture, a scripture that changed my entire ministry. 
Jesus said when he came into Nazareth, opened the book of Isaiah and turned and kept on reading and kept on turning and kept on unrolling that scroll until he got to the 61st chapter. Way down to the end. I don't know how long it took him to unroll that scroll, but he found the place where it was written and it says here, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. And I've often said, and you people know what I'm going to say here, when I found out what was beyond the word because, it changed and revolutionized my ministry. When I found out what was beyond that word because, it changed our little church into a big church. It changed our ingrown church to our outgoing church. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Listen, the Spirit of the Lord is not upon you just to pray in tongues all the time. Spirit of the Lord not upon you just so you can dance and jump and shout and fall out. Oh, that's all good. That's wonderful. Praise God for that. But the Spirit of God is on you to help suffering, sighing, crying, dying, demon-possessed, darkened, benighted, hell-bound sinners. The Spirit of God is upon you to help you reach people. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, because, because He's anointed me to preach, to preach the gospel to the poor. The first reason you're anointed is to preach. And every believer is a preacher. I said, every believer is a preacher. I said, every believer is a preacher. You may not be in the five-fold ministry, but you are, you are saved to get others saved. You're told to tell others, and you're, you're healed to get others healed. The Spirit of the Lord, the anointing, first of all, is to help you tell the good news about Jesus. Amen. If you don't start there, you won't start in place. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me. Anointed me to do what? Build my denomination? No. What's he anointed you to do? To build up your special sect of doctrine? No. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach condemnation. Good news. I don't know why preachers, preacher, I watch preachers sometimes on television, they frown. They're mad. I, I saw preachers, they find the meanest scriptures in the Bible and preach on them. <laughs> mean scriptures, mostly out of Jeremiah and Ezekiel and, and all those old prophets. Don't let them apply to us. No, not apply to us. Had, to, had, to, had nothing to do with it, but the mean scriptures. I'm going to kill you. You're going to fall. I'm going to uproot you. You're going to be destroyed. Good news. There's no anointing on that. No anointing at all. I, I tell you, just a bunch of froth and foam and sweat and spit and all of that. That's all it is, just a bunch of gyrating wi windmills. I'm going to get through, not, not anything, nobody edified. I tell you, preachers, I can't tell I, I don't presume to tell you how to preach, but I'll tell you, if you don't have any good news, keep your mouth shut and get in a substitute. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Woo, glory. I got good news. I got good news. I got good news. Amen. I got good news. And the Spirit of the Lord will help you preach good news. He's not going to help you preach mean scriptures. He's not going to help you preach uh, condemnation. He's not going to help you preach all about how bad the people are. No. When you say, Brother Osteen, they're sinners are on their way to hell and we need to tell them. Listen. It's the love of God, the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Amen. We trace, chase people away by... Uh, you know, uh, preaching these mean sermons. I'll tell you, when you preach about a good God, they'll run down the aisles to them. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. We don't have a mean God. The, he said this. Now, I'm talking about the purpose of the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach. Preach. Tell the good news. The good news. Not bad news. The good news. Not condemnation. Not beating people over the head. But good news. The good news to the poor. We ought to preach to the poor. What is the good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. You sent me to heal. Heal. Send me to heal. See, you, 
You're anointed to preach and you're anointed to heal. Bring healing to people. I want to tell you a secret. Let me tell you something, folks. Sick people don't care what name is on your church. They just want, to, they just want somebody to get them well. And Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Let me turn over there and read it. Skipping some of it. Luke 4, 18. You don't need to turn. Don't turn. Don't turn. I'll be all night waiting for you to find it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. Everybody say because. He's anointed me. What's, what is that anointing, that divine energy for? To preach. Oh, I tell you. I used to just preach about Jesus until I got the baptism and got to listen to people like, like Brother T.L. Osborne and Oral Roberts and, and uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin on faith and so forth. And then I began to preach to know how to preach Jesus. I used to preach about Jesus, but I didn't preach Jesus. I used to preach my favorite sermon. And Sam, you know, we used to do this. We'd say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. We had sermons on that. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Here's the reason I'm not ashamed. And we give them points and a poem. I'm not ashamed. Well, you know what you ought to say to them? Well, shut up and preach it. Just because you're preaching about it doesn't mean you're preaching it. I tell you, when, well, I preach it here, but whenever I go overseas, I tell you, standing before those, all oh, those multitudes and those many hundreds and thousands of preachers and, and tell them the good news I'm telling you, it's wonderful, 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 wonderful to preach good news, good news to the poor, good God wants us to tell the poor. The poor of this world, he said, you always have with you. But, but poor people need to know that they have some good news. Amen. He's anointed me to preach the gospel, good news to the poor. He has sent me, he has sent me in this anointing. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. One translation says, those broken down by the calamities of life. You are sent, if you, if you don't want to get anybody healed, the broken hearted healed, the Holy Ghost is not going to help you much. But I don't care what woman's out here, what man's out here, whether you call to preach or not, if you, if you begin to push yourself in the area of these great needs of humanity, the Holy Ghost will flame upon you. He has sent me, God sends you to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. I tell you, we ought to preach to the captives that there's freedom. Remember one time, uh, a man called me from um, a distant city about 100 miles from here. And as soon as I heard his voice, I said to him, I didn't want to embarrass him, I said, you're a homosexual, aren't you? He said, I am, but how'd you know? I said, I could tell when, when I heard your voice. I said, the Holy Ghost. I said, God loves you. God loves you. He said, well, it so shocked him. He said, I want to bring another man over there to see you because I heard about your preaching. And uh, he said, now he's not a homosexual, but he's filled with fear. He's a grown man with a family and he's so filled with fear. He, 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 he doesn't know what to do. He can't even drive a car. I've got to drive him over there. And so they came and sat in my office and I dealt, God gave me a dream about them calling first. And God showed me in the dream one would be delivered and one would not be delivered. I won't tell you about that dream. But when he called, that's the reason I knew what I did about him. But anyway, the, uh, I, I tried to deal with him privately about that, that lifestyle. But I mean, it was just, just like talking to a wall. So I, I, I got this other fellow in there and I set him down in my office. And uh, I remembered the scripture uh, that I'm anointed to preach deliverance to the captives. 
And you know what I did? I didn't sit down and counsel him. I got up and walked in my office. It wasn't very big, about 10 by 12. And I, I put him down in a chair and I just walked. And I preached like he, I was preaching to the greatest congregation in the world. And I preached about Jesus. And I preached about, I preached about this. And I preached about that. And I preached about the blood. And I, I preached about how the blood delivers us and all of that. And, and while I was preaching on the blood, that man leaped to his feet and he said, the blood, the blood, I'm free, I'm free. Free, I'm free. I'll tell you, you can preach until captives get free. But you're anointed to preach deliverance to the, to the captives. You're anointed to preach recovering of sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I mean, that's all good news. That's talking about reaching out to suffering, sighing, crying, dying humanity. Sick people, hurting people, battered and bruised people. If they hear there's a church that prays, they'll come. I said, they'll come. We had an old couple that watched our television years ago, uh, way up in years, and, uh, and didn't know anything about God or healing or anything. And, 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 and I talked to them over the phone. They said, we, we heard somebody told us, I don't even think they watched us on television, somebody told us you all prayed for sick people. Is God still healing today? I said, oh yes. Oh yes. He said, are we welcome to come? We don't go to any church. I said, you're welcome. Glory to God. I tell you, that's, that's what, it, the, the loudest bell you can ring for the world to hear about a local church is the bell of divine healing. God can deliver from the power of demons. He can deliver from migraine headaches. He can deliver from AIDS. He can deliver from cancer. Oh, he can, he can set the captives free. Let the word go out. When we begin to do that and let the word go out, we had to build a building and built a building seating a thousand, then two thousand, then four thousand, and then, and then this building. And I, I, I'm telling you, you're anointed to help suffering humanity. That's the purpose of the anointing. And then let, let me talk about a scripture that tells you the power of the anointing. And that's found in Isaiah 10, 27. You don't need to turn to it. It said it is, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. And you know, people are, they're yoked up. They, they're bound down. That woman that was bowed over, just yoked with the devil's power. She couldn't lift herself up for 18 years. She was that way looking at the ground. And Jesus looked at her and uh, said, Daughter, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And the anointing in Jesus went out of him into her. And that anointing had power. It broke the yoke and destroyed the yoke of the devil. And she stood up straight. And the old hypocrites, because it was Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath, they said, there's six days you can, ought to come and get healed in. Not on the Sabbath. Jesus said, you hypocrites. I like Jesus. <laughs> you hypocrites, if your donkey fell in the in, in the in the ditch you'd pull him out how much more this woman you see religion cares about their rules but Holy Ghost pe people care about people you know what the Bible says the Bible says that Jesus took a, a, a whip and, and he drove out all the money changers out of the out of the temple and he cleansed the temple cleansed the temple but you know the marvelous thing, right after that, the next scripture says, and once he had cleansed the temple 
of those unbelieving hypocrites. It says, then there came unto him into the temple the blind and the lame and were healed. This is the end of side one. Please turn your cassette over at this time. We need to cleanse our temple of, uh, of dignity. When we built this church. You know, we, we thought this is the greatest thing in the world. And I said, we're going to be more fanatical here than we've ever been in all of our lives. We're going to dance. We're going to run. We're going to fall out. We're going to shout. We're going to praise the Lord. We're not going to become anything but radical for Jesus. Amen. Amen. And when the temple is cleansed, then you see miracles of God. And Jesus said, my father's house should be called a house of prayer for all nations. A house of prayer. One scripture that changed my life, it says, O thou that answers prayer, all nations shall come to you. If people ever find out that God answers prayer where, where you have church, they're going to come. The Catholics will come, the Baptists will come, the Methodists will come, the heathen will come, they'll come because they hear, they hear God is healing and delivering people today. I'll tell you their grandparents that are, that are spending multiplied hundreds of thousands of dollars on their grandchildren in institutions trying to get them off of drugs and alcohol. And I'll tell you if they can just hear that Jesus has the power and the anointing can break that yoke. That's what they need to hear. Start having church Start ha instead of having just services. The power, the anointing destroys the yoke. And then I, I want to read to you the help of that anointing. In, uh, we're going to read uh, in 1 John. You can turn to 1 John if you want to. That's way back there by Revelation. 1 John chapter 2 verse 20 if you got it, say, I got it. If you're looking, say, I'm looking. First John. Find Revelation, back up a few books. First John chapter 2. Verse 20, what's the first word? All right. But you have an unction. Now, unction means an anointing. Say, I have an anointing. Say it again. But you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Now that doesn't seem right. Because, you know, just in the natural, we don't know all things. But I think what he's saying is you have an anointing, an unction, the Holy Ghost of God in your spirit who is in touch with the all-knowing God. When I need to know something, I ask God, and He tells my spirit, my spirit tells my mind. Amen. I ask God all kinds of things. I mean, it doesn't have to be real spiritual. You know, don't you lose something around the house? She'll pray for the Holy Ghost to tell her where it is. Amen. We'll be long till we'll find it. And uh, it says, You have an anointing. And you're in touch with the all-knowing God. The God who knows everything. You're not going to bankrupt heaven by asking God for some things. You have not because you ask not. So ask. Open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. Then look in uh, chapter 3, verse 26. I mean chapter 2, verse 26. These things, now this is very important. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Now look here just a moment. There are people in the ministry and out of the ministry who want to seduce God's people into false doctrine, into cults, and into things that are not helpful but hurtful. It's a miracle Lakewood Church even exists. We had so many deceivers come our way. But now notice what he said. I'm writing this about the anointing. 
concerning them that seduce you. I speak to the pastors now, guard your flock. I will ruin one service any day to preserve a church I've built. I write these things concerning those who seduce you. Thank God if Christians are trained, they don't have to have me with them all the time. Amen. I write these things concerning those that seduce you. There are a lot of deceivers. The Bible says in the last days, this doesn't fit with some of our doctrine, but you know I'm going to believe the Bible whether it destroys my doctrine or not. Can I have an Amen. In the last days, some many will de- some shall depart from the faith. That's what it says. They are in the faith, and they'll depart. You say, "Can I depart?" I sure you can. I mean, if you're determined to go to hell, God will let you. That's right. In the last days, many some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. I had a woman in this church. She may be here tonight. And I repeat what I said to her. I wouldn't call her name. But uh, she said the Lord had told her that she was going to become some great servant, prophetess or whatever. And I said, I want to say it kindly. I said, but that's not of God. Any voice that tells you you're going to become great is the voice of the devil. I think she received it. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. He must increase, we must decrease. We must not seek to be big and to be known and to be publicized. We must hide behind the cross and cry out the name of Jesus. Many shall depart, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And one ploy the devil does to demons is God's going to make you great. You're going to be one of the greatest leaders of this day. You'll have revelation. One woman came up to me one time years ago and she said, God told me I was going to get revelation so great that even you as my pastor wouldn't believe it. I said, that's a lie, 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 lie. A lie. Just breathe right in her face. Lie. I said, don't let the devil lie to you like that. I said, you're looking at somebody that will believe God. That's a lie from the devil exalting you, some great somebody. We're not somebody great. We're a big, fat mess without Jesus. <laughs> These things I, I run you concerning them that seduce you. Say, I will not depart from the faith. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I just don't want to go to church anymore. There's just too many hypocrites. Well, one more won't make a difference. Come on. You don't like the hypocrites, don't go to hell. They're all going to be there. But you know, there, I don't think there are many hypocrites in the church. Most of the people in the church are, you know, they're, they're struggling to do right. They may fall. They may make a mistake. But generally, they'll, they'll get corrected by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Now, these things I write unto you concerning them that seduce you. But, thank God, but the anointing. Everybody shout, but the anointing. Shout it again. Shout it again. See, put those two things together. Those that seduce you, shout, but the anointing. Shout it out. I can't hear you. Say, hear me, devil. I got the anointing. But the anointing which you have received of him, I want you to notice, abideth in the church. You have to go to church to get it. In your pastor. Abideth in you. It abideth. It abideth. It li- lives in you. That's the reason I never, when people want me to say, would you be please pray that I'll have an anointing. I say, you have an anointing. We, we, want, 
we want the anointing to rise up out of us. The anointing is in us. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let that anointing arise within us. If you start doing what the anointing is in you for, he'll rise. Now concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing that you have received of him abideth in you. Say, I am anointed. The anointing abides in me. Abides in me. Abides in me. Right now. Amen. Even in the Old Testament, when God could take away the Holy Spirit from them, we're sealed until the day of redemption. But even in the Old Testament, when God would lift His Spirit like He took His Spirit from Saul, an evil spirit came and tormented him. David committed adultery and then had Bathsheba's husband murdered. One of the most heinous things in the Bible. God tells it like it is. But oh, Psalm 51, have mercy upon me, oh God. He cried out to God. He knew he was wrong. Don't plead your case, plead guilty. But in that prayer, he said some of the, one of the most astounding things. Here, all this had gone on. Here, all of this had transpired. He said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now listen, the amazing thing is God had not yet lifted his spirit, even though he had committed adultery and had murdered Oh, the mercy of God. See, God will give you an opportunity to see if you'll rectify your mistakes. He'll see if you'll repent. He gave one king a whole year to turn, but he wouldn't do it. Now, David didn't lose the Holy Ghost because he repented. But he would have lost the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says that he will abide with us forever and we're sealed till the day of redemption. You say, well, how does that fit into all the other doctrines? I don't fit anything in. I just quote things. I just believe it all. I don't have to, I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to make it match. I just believe it. Amen. So he said, now, the anointing that you have received abideth in you. You don't have to pray for God to anoint you, you can pray for the anointing you have to rise up out of you and help you. Amen. Amen. It, you, you have that anointing. The anointing that you have received of him abideth you, in you. And you need not that any man teach you. Now, now, now this is, so some people take this, you know, even the man who wrote this is teaching this. You need not that any man teach you. There's some things you don't need man to teach you. And one is, as he mentions here, that you love one another. Well, God teaches you that. And then man in his own intellectuality doesn't need to teach you. The Holy Ghost uses men, but it's the Holy Ghost teaching through people. You get that? You understand that? Some people take this and take off with it. So I don't need church. I don't need anybody. I don't need any man. That isn't what it says. It says, but the same anointing teaches you all things in his truth. The main thing, the holy anointing we have is a teaching anointing to teach us. It's amazing how the Holy Ghost will open up scriptures to me. I know when I was praying, you know, after I got as old as I am, I got, to, I got to be concerned about this church. And I said, now, Lord, what's going to happen to Lake? What if you take me to heaven? You know. Don't you didn't like me to tell you this, but I'm 73. But, uh, you know, I know I look 53, but uh, it's, it's all right. And she wants me to tell you she's 12 years younger than I am, so I hasten to say that. But, but I said, now, Lord, 
Lord, I, I, I've given my life to that church. I don't, I've seen churches just torn all apart. I don't, see, I don't see what you want to do with this church. I want to know. And I begin to pray for several weeks about that. And the Holy Ghost helped me. He just brought me scriptures and brought me scriptures and brought me precedents and brought me precedents and brought me case precedents. John Hurd just brought me precedents that I could quote. Now here, here it is. And, and I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost, I'm not going to tell it because it's too sacred, but he built a case, Brother Lycan. He built a case for me. He is a lawyer. The Holy Ghost is our advocate. And he built a case. And day by day by day, he added to the case with precedence until I could go with fervor to God. And I was praying along that night. And I was just standing there one day by my chair. And the Lord told me how long I'd live. Well, you just say, well, what if you died before then? Well, just forget it. <laughs> but he told me as clear as he ever spoke to me in my life, he told me how long I would live. And I've never prayed another prayer Never asked, brought it up to God. At all, I know. <laughs> Woo! Says he teaches you all things. He's our helper. He'll teach us how to marshal the arguments of the scripture and pray and get victory. Like, Finney used to say the great revivalist shook this nation for God. And, and, and he, he said, I had bubblings out of my innermost uh, th th utterances that I couldn't even speak out. He's speaking in other tongues. And, and he'd come into a town and, and, and the devil would get on his case and he, he'd get to talking to God. And he said, God, you, you don't, you, God, you're not thinking that we're not going to have a revival in this place, do you? God, you're not thinking we're not going to have revival. We got to have it because of what your word says. See, Marshall, the arguments. The Holy Ghost helped him do that. So, you need not that any man teach you along those lines. For the anointing that you receive teaches you all things in his truth and is no lie, even as it hath taught you that you, you shall abide in it. Abide in that anointing. Stay in that anointing. And that anointing is mentioned in the Amplified Bible. I want to read it here. Well, where is it? John chapter 14. I got 15 there. But the Comforter. Everybody say Comforter. Now notice all this, this anointing is. Counselor. You know, most people, they won't counsel. They just want you to agree with them. You know what I tell people when they want me to counsel them? Do you come to church? I don't go to your church. I go to that other one. I said, I said why don't you ask your pastor? Well, I don't go to church. I say, well, you come for one month and don't miss a service in our church and listen to me preach and see if you have any problems. Well, I just can't do that. See, they don't want to help. They want you to wear yourself out. I'm not going to do it. Let them get saved and get the counselor inside of them. He's a counselor. He can tell you what to do. Somebody said, well, will you counsel me and tell me about whether I ought to stay in this adulterous situation or not? Are you out of your mind? Well, would you counsel me about whether I should tithe or not? Have you lost your brains? The Holy Ghost, the anointing, is a counselor. He is a helper. He's an intercessor. He's a lawyer. He's a strengthener. And if you need anything else, he's a standby just to help you. Amen. But listen, the main word I want to pull out of that is... He is the helper. Pastors, don't, don't kill yourself, die an early death. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
you have a helper. A lot of people, you know, in a big church, we have to make decisions that hurt, they may hurt one family or two, but, but when you pastor thousands of people, you have to take the big picture to know what's going to happen if you favor a person or two. You just have to have a certain track to run on. And we just say, well, we'll pray, and whatever the Holy Ghost says, we'll do. And they, some of them come back and said, well, what are you going to do about that? I said, well, I haven't heard from the helper yet. You wouldn't want me to disobey the Holy Ghost, would you? No, no, I, I'm going to wait and see what the Holy Ghost says about that. Most everybody who comes here are good, down-to-earth, spiritual people who understand you know, we got to have, we can't do everything to please everybody. Isn't that right? But you know why it's easy to pastor this church? We just lean back on a helper. I've got the best helper in the world. It's the Holy Ghost. And he anoints me to do the job he called me to do. And he anoints these ministers. He anoints all of you people. Whatever you do, you are anointed. Don't you think, I'm not anointed any more than you are. I'm just anointed to do my job. You're anointed to do your job. You have the anointing in you. Amen. Is that all right? All right, hallelujah. Let's praise God for the anointing. Just lift your hands and begin to praise God for that anointing. Hallelujah. Let's pray in tongues. Oh, reko bode beki a shangandra kada bahandra kati a samandra batandra bati alava kobri alava kahata. Arendo shobre hese boda da bahanda ya. Arava kandra kati alava kobri ata bahasa ta. Otoso mundo samahanda ya. Etola da bahandra bahaya. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Helper. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the anointing of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And everybody shouted amen.